I just wanted to hear. Oh wait, hold on.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, welcome, everyone, uh, for another edition of the Ides of March. Um, hey, Kathy. <laughs> um, for those of you that follow me, you know that we do this uh, every month. We started in March, back in March for the Ides of March. Um, we started doing this because the, the Ides of every month was a time for celebration and uh, it didn't become an ominous thing until Shakespeare did the play. Mm -hmm. And and because Trump is making everything great again, we just decided, you know, we would do a march of uh, Make an Ides Make the Ides great again, too. Yeah, every month. It's usually on the 13th or 15th. Thank you, Kathy, for retweeting. Um, it's usually on the 13th or 15th of every month, and this month it's on the 13th. And we're going to start with, you know, a few good pointers about Trump and then some uh, synchronous dates in history. And then we're going to talk about this past election. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> um, what was that? That was Yuck. the YW. And then I, I thought it was, the, is that the chromosomes, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> XX or XY? Um, so anyway, I still have, oh, her costume on her. She's still, uh, like her avatar is still from oh, Halloween. I need to show That's okay. Halloween costume. We will let it slide for a little while. Uh, so anyway, um, after all that, we'll be talking about um, the election craziness that's going on. But uh, I, I want to encourage people. I know a lot of people are getting discouraged because of what's happened with the election. And I want to help lift people up towards the end of this and, and help them understand why we should be optimistic and hopeful. Yep. Um, so first, we're going to start with some dates in history that you probably don't know about that happened on November 13th. And Lou's going to so, leave with those. November 13th in history, there's some good things. Uh, ben Franklin, back in 1789, said uh, uh, there's nothing, what is it, nothing? Nothing certain. Nothing but certain but death, death and taxes. Come here. Um, and there's a couple of, a lot of the things that we do on the dates in history mm -hmm. correspond to what's happening today. We like to talk about synchronicity. So number two is 1839 was the birth of the uh, Liberty Party in the United States. And now this party was uh, founded on trying to uh, get rid of slavery in the United States. This party turned out, it's not the forerunner, I guess, but the death of this party in around 1860 uh, was the birth of the radical Republicans. And now radical was Republicans, they were called that because they were trying to abolish slavery. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, they were called in 1860 radical abolitionists. Right. And notice how they were Republican. And how dare them be abolitionists. So <laughs> that's a good one for uh, today in uh, 1839. All right. uh, today in 1956, the Supreme Court ruled that Alabama, and Al it, it went for the whole nation, but it, it, the case was brought from Alabama about separation of black people and white people on uh, public buses. And so the Supreme Court said in 56 that they uh, could not do that anymore. Uh, number four, we go over to uh, 1993. Bill Clinton uh, went on the radio to uh, uh, fight for NAFTA. Yeah. And we all know where we're at on NAFTA right now. Thank, Thank the Lord. Thank Donald Trump, too. Yeah. Uh, number five. Uh, That's sweet. And then a year later, this is when Sweden's uh, referendum, uh, they voted in uh, preference of going into the EU. And that's really working out well for them right now. Sweden do, doing so well in the EU. Yeah, Sweden is doing so well for them that they're now the, the great capital, of, great the capital of Europe. Not the world, but of, of Europe. Europe. And then number six, uh, and then this is a this is terrible. As uh, 2015, three years ago, was the terrorist attack in Paris that killed 130 people, some odd people. Uh, the Bataclan uh, Arena. Yeah. And, and just d restaurants and places. I mean, a coordinated yeah, attack all over yeah. Paris. And just terrible event that happened. But three, I wanted to just three years ago. Point out something with the Bataclan because just like these huge terrorist attacks. Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to point out that the 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 fact that when the media will show these dead bodies of like children right. when they want war, but not. With, with the Bataclan, because if you watch any of the footage from the Bataclan, yeah, like no, now, they've censored the... It's not graphic. Yeah. 
dog problems. Anyway, with the Vatican, I wanted to say more about the Vatican. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of the, the, our biggest terrorist attacks are, they're being forgotten like, I mean, that's just three years ago. That was over 130 people killed. Yeah, they're mostly, becoming too routine. Mostly young people. And you've got Las Vegas that happens. Hi, Janet. Thank you for inviting people to follow. Um, but anyway, um, you know, Las Vegas happened over a year ago. You had Parkland. And, you know, there's I'm, too many. There's too, too many. many. But it's becoming so normalized. And um, it's, it's just frustrating that as far as the carnage of these events, the, the mainstream media will try to censor that. Um, you know, the song that we played at the beginning of this, Mother. Mother by Pink Floyd. Mother Should I Trust the Government, um, is, is, there's a reason we played that song. And the, the mainstream media is working alongside the government to kind of minimize what they want to and maximize things like, you know, Jim Acosta and being banned from the, the White House press pool. I mean, Meanwhile, we still don't know what happened in Las Vegas. So, I, the and so many other places really, I mean. The Bataclan. I mean, I can't believe it's been this long. It's been over three years. And then, you know, we had our 9-11, but uh, was it 2005 or 2006 when they had the, um, what was that school thing over in Russia? Uh, it begins with a B. Oh. I can't believe I forgot the name of that's it. that's the Chechnyan. Yeah. Um, the, uh, oh, what was the name of that? I read that book. Yeah, that's, I mean, that just goes away. It just goes away. Like, it's be we become, we're becoming so desensitized because Coming it's happening all the time. And then because of the media, they downplay it, and they don't want to show you the pictures. Like from 9-11, the people jumping off of the towers, um, you know, there's so many pictures of that, that and they don't show it. And while I don't, want, I don't really want to see those, I think we kind of need to, um, to understand, you know, the depth of our problems. And, I, you know, I can't believe it's been this long since the Bataclan years. happened. And it doesn't even seem like in Europe that... You know, you look at what's going on. I know that... Uh, it's like they shake it off and just keep going. You know, Britain the and the going. UK is more worried about mean tweets and arresting people for that. Yeah. The media works for Satan. Yeah, I th I'm starting to think they do. And one thing we forgot to do, so we've got the dates of uh, November 13th in history. And we forgot to do... We were going to do a uh, kind of a toast to Scott Adams and his work. Want to say hi? <laughs> Michaela, want to say hi? picture. Michaela's my daughter. And this is Lulu. This is a we are the mother of dragons, <laughs> not Game of Thrones. Oh, but. <laughs> I see some wings sprouting out there. <laughs> so we were going to do a toast to Scott Adams because he does a lot of great work on uh, Twitter, and you know I don't agree with Scott Adams all the time. And it, actually, Thanks. I'm I'm thinking maybe sixty forty that I agree with him, but I do like how Scott Adams makes us think and makes us look at things and perspective and he talks about um, persuasion persuasion and you know there's we need to get a message across to a lot of people and a lot of us could learn a, a bunch from Scott Adams so on this date in 1841 a man named James Braid which I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly he uh, saw a demonstration of animal magnetism which I'm not sure what that is I didn't have time to uh, uh, research it completely but this demonstration that James Braid saw led him into basically, I guess, in not inventing, but just I mean, coming up with hypnotism. And I know that Scott Adams is a big yeah. He's, when he's when a this hypnotist. when this guy came up with the hypnotism, he you know he was a he was a surgeon, so he was like a I guess today you would be considered a holistic kind of thinking person because he wasn't against um, medicine and you know, all that we practice, it was like a whole body thing, and, and, and the mind is part of it. And, you know, if Scott has taught us nothing else, it's so much about persuasion. And, and maybe uh, McSally out in Arizona, maybe if she had practiced a little bit more of, you know. She could practice with that dog that she had on the couch with her, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So we want to take oh, a wow. simultaneous sip that's, that's good. and toast Scott Adams. And everybody can take one with us. <laughs> He, he always does coffee, but we've got uh, some red wine tonight. Cheers to you, Gabby.
Um, <laughs> and nice Jeep, by the way, Kathy. I know, I Kathy, I Kathy, a viewer, you know, her anniversary was this month, and her husband got her the coolest Jeep ever. And Very jealous. I'd like a, a cool Jeep one day. <laughs> so we've got the birth of him. We've also got a couple of good birthdays on today. Yeah. Augustine of Hippo. Um, he's a, an important figure in the early church, uh, Christendom. And I would just suggest you go, you can go down a rabbit hole looking into this stuff. But this guy is, uh, some people put him up there with uh, Peter. I'm, I'm sorry, not Peter, Paul. Paul. Paul of Tarsus. And you got Augustine of <laughs> Hippo. Wild. He was born in 354. Uh, a very important figure in Christendom. He uh, had a lot to say. Uh, one of his big uh, uh, parts of this was grace from Christ. And that's a big one. And then we also have Ayan Hirsi Ali. Well, hold born. on. With, the, with uh, Augustine of Hippo. You know, Augustine of Hippo is Augustine. I know you've all heard of Augustine. Um, he had a lot to do with um, thoughts on original sin, uh, predestination, along with free will like i know that ali and his 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 when i got into his stuff a little bit he it, there's predestination alongside good. free will so there's some good stuff in there yeah it, the more that we researched on this augustine guy we wish we had started earlier because there's a lot we were of distracted by the election coming yeah. up and we actually uh yesterday me and avon and i were like hey tomorrow's the ides <laughs> I was like, oh crap. We've got to get working. Crap. <laughs> we better start making some notes. But um, the Augustine definitely need to delve further into him because an interesting dude. And for him to be the, he helped Christianize a lot of um, the Middle East, actually. Because mm -hmm. he but, was out of North Africa. Uh, he actually uh, was in the city of Carthage for a while and he went to Milan. He was all over. He was all over the Mediterranean, but he was a very important figure. And he's not important to just Catholics. He's important to Protestants as well. Yeah. Uh, Calvinists and Martin Luther. Uh, this guy's a, a big figure in, in what we think about Christianity today. So that's a. I was not really that much aware of him. So yeah. That's a good yeah. One. Just knew of him. Knew that he was a saint. And so then we have uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali, an activist out of Somalia. She had to leave the Middle East for her life. And went to the Netherlands. the Netherlands. And then she worked in government, uh, local government there. And but she had to flee the Netherlands, too. She was not safe there. Yeah. And I, I don't even, I, I think even to this day that she has 24-7 um, She probably has security. To. But Ayan Hirsi Ali ought to be a, an icon of the feminists, but instead we've got Linda Sarsour. Well, you know, maybe uh, Laura Loomer, we're going to get into her later. Laura Loomer may have... Uh, have Put a crack in her uh, in her fortress. Oh yeah, because she because, uh, uh, Alyssa, she got Alyssa, Milano, and, Alyssa Milano to disavow her, and then somebody else today I can't remember Deborah who it was. Missing or was it? Oh, Deborah Missing, yeah. yeah. Um, so kudos to Laura Loomer on but that. But losing the uh, Human Rights Award too, getting oh, yeah. that pulled back. Yeah, I, I'd like to think Laura Loomer deal. had a lot to do with that. Well, nobody else was talking about it. Right. And so you've got... I've got Lady Jane Grey. On today. So Lady Jane Grey, you've probably heard, you would know her better as the Nine Days Queen. And in 1553, she was accused of treason along with her husband. Um, she was 16 years old. And the only reason I thought of bringing her up is when I was... You know, one, one real quick pause. 16 years old. 16-year-old girls in America today... Treason yeah. is not even on their radar. Uh -uh. And how would they handle it? Would they even know what it means? Right. And then how does she handle it going forward? My guess is that, thank you very much. Um, I'm, my guess is that they wouldn't handle it very well. But anyway, um, Loomer is the only investigative journalist doing anything in Broward. You know, it looks, she is. it seems to be that. And we are going to Loomer and we've, we've been tweeting her and retweeting her and Ali also. Yeah. We're going to get to Broward County for sure. Definitely. Um, so, anyway, uh, Lady Jane Grey, she was 16 years old. Um, she's kind of thrust into the limelight, you know, appointed queen. With um, It was kind of, it's, it's a whole backstory that goes into how she became queen, and she was only queen for nine days. Um, but then she was accused of treason along with her husband. But I just wanted to show you a letter. This is a letter that she wrote to her sister the night before 
she was going to be uh, killed and she was beheaded and she knew she was going to be beheaded. And so she says, she says this, she says, my good sister, once more again, let me entreat thee to learn to die, deny the world, defy the devil and despise the flesh and delight yourself only in the Lord. Be penitent for your sins and yet despair not and desire with St. Paul to be dissolved and to be with Christ, with whom even in death there is life. Okay, I'm a Christian. <laughs> I don't know and that... How, how well would I have handled that situation? You know, I tweeted something earlier about this, and that this, this short, learn to die, deny the world, defy, defy the devil. Defy the devil and despise, despise the, the flesh. flesh. I mean, at, at that, we're taught... Our teenagers can't say no. You know, they, we've got to have abortions and birth control because they just can't they say no. And here, then. this 16 year old from 1553, in a letter to her sister, when she's she's going to she's be beheaded a... the next day. And it, I, let me just go on just a little bit more. Be like the good servant, and even at midnight, and even at midnight, be waking, lest when death cometh and stealeth upon you, like a thief in the night. You be with the servants of darkness found sleeping, unless for lack of oil you be found like the five foolish virgins, or like him that he had not on the wedding garment, and then you be cast into darkness or banished from the marriage. Rejoice in Christ, as I trust you do, and seeing you have the name of a Christian, as near as you can follow the steps and be a true imitator of your master, Christ Jesus, and take up your cross. Lay your sins on his back and always embrace him. I mean, it just gives me chills reading that. Um, and actually, there's more to that letter. You can, you can just Google uh, Lady Jane Grey letter to sister, and you can get the whole thing. It's not that long. But I, I read that, and I was like, I, even, at, you know, at my age, you know, I'm sentenced to death tomorrow, and I'm going to send yeah. something, you know, or I'm going to send something to my brother. I can't imagine that. She was 16 years old. And, you know, wh what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> today um but uh, but I, I would like you to, to to leave you with that on that uh, you know the, the that so sentence. if you take from the dates today hold on i just want you to leave you with learn to die deny the world defy the devil those and, three things and despise the flesh despise the flesh i mean those four things um so and, and from these dates if you you know go look up augustine of hippo and look up lady jane gray I mean, she was called a lady for a reason, and there's, it's, it was status at the time as well, but she earned that with that letter she wrote to her sister. She did. And uh, look up Ayan Hirsi Ali. Uh, I haven't heard about her in the last few years, but I'm sure she's probably in hiding. She's an and, interesting character. I don't know if you ever heard her speak. Yeah, but. she's done some good things. But to kind of tie into making the Ives great again was we would also highlight some good things happening and although it's kind of hard if people get lost in the fog of war that's going on right now right. there are still there's always good things happening because it's going to be hidden from us from regular mainstream media but the economy is doing gangbusters in the third quarter the gdp fell into the three percent and this <laughs> is crazy you know you take gdp and you take uh, unemployment the numbers where they're at now are numbers that the Obama administration told us were gone. The those days are gone. We can't, you know, get those back. Don't get used to it. Uh, get used to the new normal. Uh, Obama said in speeches uh, during the uh, election of 2016, uh, the manufacturing jobs will not come back. So he 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 tried to lay claim to how well the economy is doing now, and. What's lost in all this is, Obama, how do you have a plan for something that you said was gone and could not come back? Right. So how do you, how did you, how did your plan, how did your economic, your great minds at Treasury and your great minds in the Defense Department maybe or Obama wherever. Maybe Obama has the magic wand. Maybe, yeah, he does. All. And he was just hiding it from us all. <laughs> so how do you have a plan that accounts for today? GOP's when you said is. today would not happen right. anymore, had to get used to the new normal. And you can tell from his speeches, like if you saw him out campaigning for the elections, that uh, Obama 
Like he's wearing the stress on his shoulder. Well, and he's not he's not as haughty. He's not as he's not looking down on his people as much as he's he used sweating. To be. He's sweating. He's nervous. But he's not looking he's not yeah. right. But that comes from kind of being humble. He, he doesn't realize he's being humbled, but God has a tendency to humble those who are full of pride and Right. Thank you, Janet. Um but uh when you watch but, him, though, he's sweating. You can see you, him and Biden and some Well, and he's always rolling up his sleeves. Yeah. And I'm like, you're not, you're not working hard. Any, you haven't been, <laughs> you haven't worked hard in your life. I don't think. He's a community organizer. He was, he was. Working but hard and you, hard. you, you juxtapose what's happening now. Yeah. With our, Trump. with the world and stuff, and and what's been, what's happening before. In 2009, on this day, Obama met with the Japanese Prime Minister, and he warned North Korea. That you better be getting rid of those nuclear weapons. This was in 2009. You better do, because he remember he told he, Russia, he better, you know what, he told Russia like, to cut it out when they were right. messing with. He you know told what to it, it reminds it me of, like when you would see those shows with uh, the reality shows where the people come in and show you how to raise your children, oh. and you know the parents, you, you, your oh, child would be wrecking havoc, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Your child would be wrecking havoc, and then the parents would be like, "No, you don't, you don't do that." And a year after that, Obama pressed China on their uh, flooding, uh, flooding uh, America with imports because of their weak currency. And Hu Jintao, the premier of China at the time, he told Obama that we will reform at our own pace. Yeah. Now, I, have, I, I know China's pushing back on, the, on Trump right now, but I've been hearing, hearing some agreements also. So there's a totally different dynamic going on right now. Yeah. But it, and it's funny to watch how the mainstream media handled that then compared to how they're they handled Trump. Well, I had never heard of, of, of this huge intel. I, I had neither. We'll reform at our own pace. Right. <laughs> yeah. Trump would say, "Okay, you got your pace. I've got mine." Right. Do what you've got to do. It's fun. We didn't hear about that for a reason. Yeah. It wouldn't have reflected good on him. Uh -uh. They got to protect their guy at all costs. All right, so now we what, get to... Yes, we already talked about that. Okay, never mind. To, um, so now we're going to talk about the election, right? So we know there's plenty of people covering what's going on with Broward County and Georgia and Arizona. And Arizona's been seeded by a supposed warrior in Arizona. And I just, you know, we're disgusted like a bunch of you guys are. Uh, this is... Where are we at? We, this is where 2020 begins. Yeah. Now, probably last week. 2020 began last week. There are some people down in Broward County fighting right now. They've been fighting for uh, going back to last week. Ali Alexander. And Laura followed Loomer. Him at, at Ali and at Laura Loomer. The only journalist that's actually covering what's actually going on. Right. So, you guys, if you're not following them, you probably are, but... And spread the word that to follow these guys. They're doing, they're doing the gops work. They're doing the grand old parties work in Broward County right now. Oh, meanwhile, the GOP is fundraising off their backs, off their hard work, right. in which the money that they're fundraising is not going to go to them. It's not going to go to no. anybody that's fighting this good fight down there. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I know people. A lot of people are discouraged, but I'm I'm actually not. This is actually encouraging because we are seeing the game plan for 2020. You know that the Democrat Party right now, the Democrat Party is field testing their weapons that they've used for years. They're field testing the upgrade of their yeah. weapons for 2020. Right. They're and doing if the, that right now. And if and whatever just, passes now, they're going to use them. And, and if we if we maintain Florida and Georgia, I mean. It's because of Laura Loomer and Ali. It is shining so much light on it. Because um, you, you, if they hadn't gone down there, I have a feeling. And at the same time, story. as I talk about these two, we've got the GOP chairwoman. You know, as of yesterday, because I've been out of Twitter today because I've been working. But at, through yesterday, the GOP chairwoman, her only tweets are about their ground game and how they did so well. Yeah, in the she's election. patting herself on the back. But there's no follow through through the election. There's no planning before the election, and we've got. We've got two folks that are way under the radar, low on the totem pole in the GOP, and they're down there fighting. They're in the street, and they're, they're 
they're talking to people, they're confronting, they're filming stuff. And, and we can't even that, get the GOP and we can't to get, tweet We can't stop get the, the two steal. people, the two people that are about to lose their election, Rick Scott and Ron DeSantis. Right. They could go on Sean Hannity, but they can't show up in Palm Beach County to fight for their own election. Right. And we've got McSally that just seeds hers right. and gets on a couch with her dog and says, oh, everything is just she dandy. Didn't, she didn't even fight. And then truth, the truth be known about that, Kelly Ward in the primary was the one that had all the passion on that one. But we had to get McSally because we were told that uh, Kelly Ward, yeah, she might be able to win the primary, but she couldn't win statewide. That's what the GOP wanted us. Right. Okay. Way to go, GOP. Yeah. The GOP who, wants who to lose. A lot of us right think now. that the GOP does want to lose. but They do. But that might be the case, but we're going to call them out. And I, to me... You know, Jack Posobiec did a Periscope. I can't even remember what night it was. Maybe Thursday night. Um, shining a light on this. And then Ali there shortly thereafter. And then they decided to go down there. If they hadn't started shining the light on the steel down in Florida. I don't think that, I don't think the Rick Scott would have filed lawsuits. Yeah. I don't think that. And, and well, Rod they were behind the game. Because Ali was saying, well, you, you haven't put your instructions in writing. You're the governor. Yeah. You haven't, and then Pam Bondi, you haven't sued. Like all that happened after. And then Pam Bondi wakes up days later. And even then, it took a couple of days. Yeah, and and, and, and Pam Bondi I, and them have all have known for years about this Brenda Snipes. Exactly. That's another thing with the GOP. Yeah, everybody talk. You know, the CNN and everybody says nothing uh, strategic. Well, they said uh, Brenda Snipes was appointed by Jeb Bush. Okay, well that's a problem in and of itself. Can you see a Chuck Schumer or one of them, you know, they're, go, you know, governor of a state or whatever, and because this is a Democrat count, a Republican county, they're going to appoint a Republican. Yeah. They're going to, because that's the way it should be. No. Yeah. No. It's just like just George Bush when he decided to bring in. Or the Republican Congress when there was it was a tie and they went, well, we're going to be. Bi bipartisan, and the only people that have tried to be bipartisan are are Stockholm syndrome Republicans, right? Who who did it, and it just backfired on them anyway. Because Democrats play to win. Democrats play to win, and uh, Republicans die on the hill of ma principles. Yeah, they just die on the hill of ma. <laughs> yeah. Ma. And so, what I'd like to get into now is Ivan and I both wrote our congressmen and our senators yesterday, and got still today have no answer. How do you? I, I looked on Twitter, Facebook, I Googled for news on my representative who just got elected handily, a Repu Republican in the District 1 in Mississippi. Yeah. And there's been no answer. I, I, I even was able to email one of his uh, uh, workers here in DeSoto County who uh, had given me his card a month or so ago, uh, Walt Starr. There is no response. Do you. Do you see what's going on in Broward County, Georgia, and Arizona? Do you have anything to say about this? Nothing. And they're not. Nothing. And you go to their so timelines. So what I'll tell you is that you go to their timelines. There's nothing, and there's just little, you know. Oh, I'm so glad to be reelected to the district district one in Mississippi. I'm looking forward to represent you guys in Washington. Right. Well, what are you doing now? Nothing. And we've got Senator Elect Marsha Blackburn. Nothing. We've got uh, David Kustoff. Is He's a nine? representative. What, what, which, uh, which not district, district nine. It's not nine. That's, maybe uh, eight. He's my representative. In Tennessee, nothing. No response. Nothing. We got two senators in Mississippi. Nothing. Right. And don't get me started on Cindy Hyde Smith. Anyway. Yeah. Besides that, uh, but, but you know, we can't, we, we can't even get them to tweet. You know, the hashtag "Stop the Steal," um, which is the hashtag that we got going with Ali. And I don't know if you were paying attention to. Um, tr Twitter wouldn't let it trend, and I was watching. Oh yeah, well I remember seeing because it was the all Twitter trends. Tweets. I thought you know it was like up to three hundred thousand, and actually Ali had posted some statistic that showed it was like six seven hundred thousand. Yeah, but when that fool at CNN got uh, Chris put Cuomo, a, no, oh Acosta, the, the main fool, <laughs> Acosta, the Jim fool, Acosta show, fool number one. <laughs> when he got booted out of the White House. He he barely got fifty thousand tweets and it's trending, whereas over half a million on this not trending. Right, that tells you a lot. Yeah, but our representatives are already failing us. The ones that just got elected. Right, there are some we we cold the party cold a lot of uh, never Trumpers and and so called conservatives that really aren't. 
I know. We and a lot of some? people think, uh, okay, the, one of the reasons that so many in the House didn't run again, you know, Trey Cowdy, Paul Ryan, and all them, because they thought the blue wave was coming. You know, I think we should all be grateful that we yeah. don't have to primary those never Trump losers. So uh, I know a lot of you were discouraged by the outcome of, of this past election, but I think it's done us some favors. Um, it has. It's, it's cooled out some of these never Trumpers so that we don't have to deal with that in 2020. Um, and then oh. the McSally and people like that, it, it's kind of like the, the, the race down in Georgia where they had uh, Roy Moore and Luther Strange in the primary, which actually in the primary, all the passion was behind Mo Brooks, but the GOP establishment wanted Luther Strange. Nobody knows and so about Mo Brooks. Everybody voted for Roy Moore, Roy Moore as a protest vote. Um, but I think what you're seeing on a, you know, it, there's a pattern here. If you're, if you are against Trump, you are not going to get, get elected. And, you know, you know, just a, a warning sign to y'all, Trump's going to be gone after 24 and we need to start thinking beyond Trump. We have to start think, thinking about 2020 right now, but we have to think about 2024 and who's, and somebody's going to, Trump was never on the horizon before 2015, right. 2016. So something will come up, you know, but we can't count on something will come along. Well, one man was never going to, never going to save us. It's, it's actually more about what we he's are just, do. He's just awakened the frustration. He's, 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 he's gotten in front of, it's kind of like, uh, you know, he's not leading cattle, he's leading horses. Yeah. And there's a bunch of horses out because horses, you have to, to get in front and right. slow them down. Right. Yeah. Because that's they'll good, just go everywhere. That's a good analogy. And it's not like cattle, but it's like horses, and they have all these, you know, we were all out here going, what the hell, who's going to come along? Right. And so now we've got this, it's kind of like when Rush Limbaugh came on the picture in 89, yeah. 90, is that I agree, there's somebody on the national stage Who's agreeing, saying what, saying what, what I was I'm already thinking. thinking. That's what a lot of people don't understand. And Trump is doing the same thing. He's saying what a lot of people are thinking. And we got to start thinking And it's not racist, and it's not misogynistic, and it's not homophobic. It never was until he declared himself as a GOP candidate. And, and But, you know, the lesson we're talking about here is is for the GOP. If you're going to pick people like McSally, you know, who who thought, who thought was, you know, she loved McCain. She McCain was her mentor, I think she had said. Oh, God. But I didn't know all this. I didn't know that. Um, I had supported Kelly Ward, though, so I didn't I didn't know yeah. a lot about McSally. Um I just remember them telling us, you know, Kelly Ward can't, she can win the nominee, you know, but she can't win statewide. McSally can. Well, I think we've proven time after time after time. We can, we, I think we've proven that McSally didn't care to win. Right. Yeah. She, she just said, okay, okay, I'll run. Like, okay, sorry. Okay, I'll run. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, I'll, I'll go back to us, me and Yvonne, uh, writing our uh, representatives and tweeting them. At the end of my tweet to my representative, Trent Kelly, Mississippi 1, I said, if you do not believe that our republic is in danger, then I don't know that we've already lost our republic. Right. And there's been no response. No response. And I, I wrote, I wrote his uh, one of his uh, office guys here in DeSoto County, and no response. It's been 36 hours. It's yeah, that's kind Nothing. of frustrating. It's kind of like the, you know, Lou and I announced last time that we had gotten the first uh, leader to go on record. As, as declaring that they have had no hush money paid out from the the secret from that fund for sexual harassment. Yeah, and, and that, that was fund, that was Trent Kelly. And that was Trent Kelly. And that that fund is not just sexual harassment. There's a bunch of other stuff tied into it, and you can see the judgments uh, by that board on all those. Uh, you guys might not know, but the, there's supposedly this hush fund in Congress uh, for I think it's 17 million going back to 1996 or something like that. Yeah. But mo a lot of that is not, it's, it's workplace harassment too. It's a fund, it's, it's budgeted, it's set up by law, but a lot of it's not sexual harassment. But the ones that are considered sexual harassment, they're not included in the stuff. You're supposed to be able to see it yeah, by law. But you can't. But you can see the stuff that are, you know, somebody said, oh, you're a jerk. And, yeah, but you can't you know, see they, the sexual. They settled these suits, these little suits. Everything sexual harassment has Anything been sexual hidden. has been hidden, right. and it's not supposed to be. And so we, we were on a mission to try to get at least our those leaders that haven't had anything paid out to declare. And you haven't had it. responses. You've had vague. I had vague responses from David Kustoff and nothing from and the senators. you replied back. From Corker or Lamar Alexander, which I guess they don't care because... 
Well, Lamar is still a, a senator. He's, but yeah, he's still in there. Corker. But Corker I, is a lame duck. And so I received something back from Kustoff, and it was just kind of a generic blah, blah, blah. And then when I responded back, telling him more specifically what I wanted and what I, I want you to tell me that you have had no money paid out because I don't think that David Kustoff has had yeah. and I have received nothing. Um, and so, the same thing I got from, because we sent the same exact wording, I sent mine back to Roger Wicker yeah. and I never got anything back. It's the, import, the important thing about this is that you watch what Laura Loomer and Ali are doing down there in Florida and you see um, they're, they're having to be covered, they're making a difference. Yeah. Just by being there, just by pushing back. So if, if everybody would just I mean, push back. I mean, that made back, MSNBC take notice. Yeah. If everybody would push back and just, you know, contact your leaders, ask them if they have had money paid out from the secret congressional fund. If you would just start activating, um, you don't have to be Laura Loomer and, you know, she, she's her own, you know, one woman. And you could do it from your kitchen mainstream table. Mainstream media um, person. But each one of us can be doing something to help this along and... Um, who knows what response one of us will get. You know, we got Trent Kelly, which we hadn't gotten much out of him after that, but we're not finished. So no. who knows what who knows what more comes from that. So there's more that each and every one of us can be doing to hold our leaders accountable, and we need to be doing that. Um, and that's this, the, the election is as bad as it was. I mean, it's not as bad as the slaughter as most people in office yeah. have that, that first midterm. And thank Thank goodness for Trump. He kept it from being a blue wave. Yeah. Um, and, and we still have the Senate, and there's a lot going on there. But 2020 started last week, and 2024 after that. 2022, I don't think it's going to be as – I mean, 2020 is going to be game-changing time. Yeah, and Trump's on the top of the ticket, so there will be no excuses. Um, but – as, as good as things are going to be then, I don't, I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a whole lot to be hopeful for and optimistic for. And, and watching Ali and Laura Loomer down there in Florida helping save the republic the way they are, even with no and help they're from doing their own the party. Man, if I were, and I, I keep saying if, and I'm on the verge of, because I, I left, and I don't want to leave my family again, but I, I left my family and, and it was for profit, and I'll admit, but I left my family uh, to head down to Katrina, uh, Katrina and, and did a bunch of, and I, for a while I was sleeping on the ground in New Orleans the week after the hurricane hit in right. City Park. And I'm almost to the point where I, I know that I can't just sit back. I, would, I wish I was on the ground with Ali and Laura Loomer doing something, but I know that they're, they've got people with them doing that, so I'm doing what I can back here. And I'm trying to, I'm, I can't get a hold of my congressmen and my senators. And right now, one of my senators is in a, in a re-election fight with the Oh, SB. yeah. Yeah, that's another Senate that's seat a, they're probably going to steal. Uh, let's let's, so let's hope that we can Mississippi stop that. we're worried about Mississippi being but. stolen, too. But even if it's won by the Republican, I'm worried about the Republican itself. I'm going to vote Republican in this special election coming up in a couple of, two and a half weeks. But Cindy Hyde-Smith... She was a Democrat until 11, 12 years ago, 10. And it's just sad so, that the GOP couldn't find And this is what we have. This is my choice. You know, Mike person. Espy, who was drummed out of the Clinton administration for uh, some, I mean, there were charges coming, and so he resigned. Yeah. He was uh, transportation or uh, our he was secretary of HUD or something. Something like that. And then we got Sidney Hyde Smith, a former Democrat. And that's what we have to choose from. Yeah, and the GOP couldn't find any, any other Nobody Republican else. worthy enough. You so, know. but I'm worried about if uh, the Republican wins, what's going to happen with that. So, but and that's if the that's if the Democrats don't steal that seat too. Here's what we got: we got till 2020, and you know, I'm I'm looking at Trent Kelly, my representative. Is he going to represent the country? Is he going to be a constitutionalist? Is he going to defend our constitution, our state? And if he's not, somebody's got to primary him. Right. Just put it out there. He needs to be primary. And I don't know who's going to do it, but sometimes I think, you know, I would go up and do that, but I don't, I don't know if I could I could do that, but I will support somebody for sure. Yeah. We've got to start looking. This is the time. We we got through this election, we voted for right. Republican and we got through it. And now it's time to start 
calling some more. Right. And stop thinking that be just because, you know, you're just little old me, you know, what can I do? And actually, you can do a lot. Um, and you could start by whatever local access you have to people. You have, uh, because you have a phone, you have access to anyone. But um, within your own states, you have a lot of power to hold your representatives and your leaders accountable. And we have to start doing that. Um, one man, Trump's not going to save this country uh, on his own. He has bought us some time, and he's doing all that he can. He could under. do a lot more if he had some allies. Yeah. I used to work with a manager a long time ago. He would say, I just need one person on my side, and I'll make it happen. Yeah. So how about let's get a few more on his side? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so don't be discouraged. As always, when we end these, we always tell people to the, the 48 hour rule, which it's probably more like the 24 hour rule now. You know, 24 about the to 72. Because sometimes, and then you go with CNN with the, the lie they had a couple months ago uh, about the uh, uh, sourcing and the lawyers with David Cohen and all that. And even other left wing outlets said this is not, we had to pull oh, it yeah, back. That's right. CNN stood by it because they were, they were protecting uh, Bob Woodward. Yeah. And so, even so, sometimes you may have to go 24 hour to three month rule. Right. So uh, they're and, still going to have to retract and one day. We've seen even longer. So, you know, don't be distracted or don't be discouraged by things that are released um, in the short term because it's it's highly likely that it's going to be corrected or updated or anything but, yeah. you know, fake news. So don't forget that. So um, we have a lot to be thankful for. Trump is still. Everyone's president. That's and what I was going to end not. it with: is Trump is still the president? <laughs> He's still the president. Yeah. Which is after all that mud slum. Right. And He's they've got the these new indictments, like for Jerome Corsi. I don't new know. indictments. Jerome Corsi. There's, I think, there's three coming down. Jerome Corsi. I think Roger Stone is one. I don't know who the so other. So how one. many Russians did Jerome Corsi know? Not zero. It's not about it's it's they they're, if they catch him it's on what? perjury yeah. because they had all his emails and they had all this stuff and you say one wrong thing to them yeah. which that's the thing you know don't talk to the feds why would you talk to the don't feds? talk to him because he was cooperating not yeah he was cooperating and what does he get for that he gets indicted well Manafort was cooperating true and they was, raided his home they at raided five his home at five but but Tony Tony Podesta and Hillary Clinton you know they're they're good to go you know you know go ahead and scrub all your stuff and. Erase stuff that Congress was looking for. You're fine with that, but yeah. make sure there's a D in front of your name. All right. So there's still two sets of rules, but um, things are changing, and I want people to remain hopeful and optimistic because I am. He's still the president, and that's not going to change. That's not going to change. No. So they can will it all they want. Um, so ne on December is the Ides. I think, uh, I think it's, it's the back 15th. on the 15th again. I think the Ides next month is back on the 15th, and we'll be back discussing all, you know, some new synchronous dates in and history. Actually, I can't wait because it's right before Christmas, and I yeah. think it's going to be, I, I can't wait to see what happens over the next few weeks. Yeah, things are changing, you know, the, 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 everything is just so fast and furious as far as the, the news. Interesting times. Very interesting times. So, don't lose hope. Don't believe anything you hear in the first, you know, hour or two of, of what the mainstream media is reporting because it's probably going to be corrected. Um, and, and Donald Trump is still your president. That's right. I think that's a good note to end on. Thanks for tuning in.